everyone. How's it going? I'm just going to adjust the light a little bit before we get started. Um, let's see, it's a little bright and a little bit. There we go. Okay, I think that's okay for now. Let me know if it's a little too dim and whatnot. But yeah. Um, okay, so don't worry, I will show you what colors we will be using. It's kind of up to you if you want to create a different color palette. Um, they're very earthy colors, you know, think fall, so think orange, uh, red, uh, green. Um, darker greens are really nice for this type of painting. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely use, kind of have a different palette than me. But I do suggest... Um, like reds and greens, like warmer tones, right? Because it is still supposed to be <laughs> kind of fallish. Um, you know, I know everybody's excited about Christmas and all that stuff, but I thought this would be a nice little transition. <laughs> and then in terms of brushes, um, yeah, as long as you have a, you know, you don't really need to have a big one for this one because there is a lot of little details. Um, this is a smaller version, and I'm going to be doing a bigger version. So, you know, the temp, the in terms of papers, size paper, again, you can kind of use whatever size you have. Uh, I'm using 9 inches by 12 inches. Um, as long as your paper is long, like, higher, you know, instead of have wider, right? So you don't really want to do it this way because it will defeat the purpose. This way will be a nicer uh, composition but you can use any of these little brushes so anything that's nice and fine that you might I'm using a I think a double zero for this one but you can definitely use um this one is I believe five by seven yeah so this one's around five by seven right definitely portrait uh yeah portrait not landscape <laughs> All right, so if you are doing the sketch uh, with me, like live, that's awesome. We're gonna be doing that first, and then we'll talk a little bit more about colors and all that stuff, all right? There is an outline that was provided, but um, it's, a, it's a simpler composition. If you are doing the outline, um, you can do that while we're doing the drawing. Uh, and if you already did the outline, just sit tight, just relax, and we'll paint soon enough, all right? Okay, so let me know if it's too dark for you guys. I'm just keeping it a little bit dark right now for the drawing part because I want to make sure that you can see it um, and whatnot, okay? I do have a border. You don't have to have one. Um, there is a little bit of splashing throughout the painting, so that's why I added a border this time. You don't have to have one, though, absolutely. And the first thing you want to kind of identify is how high you want your... Um, your little deer to be. So you can kind of have him, you know, in the middle or a little bit lower. So that way you can create this nice little branch um, circle, right? So I do recommend doing a little bit lower on, in your paper. So you can kind of do a little line or a little dot in the middle of where you're going to put your, your little baby deer. All right, actually I think I might lower it a little bit more. Now I'm going to be sketching quite um, a little bit darker than I normally would. I recommend you guys sketch nice and light so that way it's easier to paint over it, you know, watercolor, especially if you have really um, not super saturated watercolors and they're not too dark, you wanna make sure that your sketch is nice and light. All right, perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, right now, all you need is your pencil. Again, here's the original for it. Now, the first thing I want you to do is definitely figure out where you're going to put it. And then you want to actually do a little bit of a curved line like this. It doesn't have to be that big. We're just trying to position our little deer here. We want it to be nice and curved here. We're going to do very simple shapes. So keep that in mind. And they are going to overlap a little bit. So, But you'll be able to... Um, paint over that and all that stuff, okay? Now the reason we have it curved is because he is kind of creating that little nest 
almost like a little nested area. So that's why it's nice and curved. So the sizing doesn't have to be too big. You kind of want to leave enough room on the sides here. So I think this is a pretty good size. All right, it's about this much. So like maybe two inches or so. Okay. Now the body, you don't have to worry too much about making these little lumps on his back here yet. We're just going to do kind of like a little, almost like an igloo shape. I'm gonna do a nice little bubble almost. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure it's nice and rounded. Because once we um, have the shapes that we want, we can go over it a little bit darker, okay? It's pretty good. So it's just a little, like a little mountain. A little bump almost. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad to know that you're <laughs> happy to be person too. Participating live painting is super fun. It can be a little bit challenging. So you are able to rewind this video. I believe you just can't fast forward because it's live, but the, it will be a recorded video anyway for you to watch at any point. All right, so we have the little bubble here. Now we wanna decide where our head is going to be. You can have it on the left or the right. I definitely recommend having it on the right here because that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to place like a rounded circle over here it should be coming out a little bit though okay from this circle and it doesn't have to be perfect like i said we're just doing the shapes right now and then we're going to do the little nozzle um right here i'm just going to try to zoom it in a little bit oops that's not it I always have to adjust the light a little bit. Sorry. There we go. We can't go too close. There we go. Okay. So you can kind of see here his little head is over here. And don't worry, you can always adjust the height of the body. So you, it doesn't have to be precise right now. All right. And then... We have the little face here. And we wanna start thinking about the ears. So the ears are usually will be on the side over here. So the ears are very similar to cow ears, but we're going to just create, I'm gonna go slow here so you guys can kind of get the shapes right. And honestly, the deer is probably the hardest part. Everything else is a little bit more organic and a little bit simpler, in my opinion. You can definitely erase the inside overlapping in the face here because you don't really need it. And we are going to be making some adjustments anyway, so don't worry too much about that. Now, although my paper is a lot bigger here, I'm you can definitely make your deer as big as you want. It is a baby, so, you know, you don't want to overly do it, I guess. Um, just because you want him to still look like a baby, essentially. But I do think I probably could have made him a little bigger here, but that's okay. I'm going to adjust the back a little bit. But then the other ear is going to be coming out this way. And what happens is it gets a little bit thinner as it goes in. Okay, it kind of looks like little socks. <laughs> and this ear is the back kick. So it's the back of the, this is the back of the ears here, but then the inside here does show. So there will be a little bit of a a little bit showing here. Yeah, that's awesome, Kathleen. Happy to have you. It's a really nice and relaxing painting. You know, Mondays are tough, so <laughs> what better way than to paint along and have something fun to do on a, on a Monday 
Monday evening. There we go. Okay. So we have the two ears, the face, and the body for the most part, right? But then this is where you can start kind of making adjustments. So it kind of looks like an armadillo right now because the body is too round, right? And that's okay. That's kind of what you want. What you want to do next is you want to kind of do a little leg kind of tucked in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it won't show too much. It'll just show a little bit of the body here. Sorry, the leg, I mean. A little bit. Now, something you do want to adjust here in the face is we're going to actually have it be a little bit more thinner. So we're going to, I'm going to make this a lot darker for you guys to see. But notice how the sides are kind of going out and then kind of inward a little bit. Because the eyes are going to be right about there. Okay. Just a little bit more. Now the body is a way too round, right? So we're going to do kind of a little tail here. It doesn't have to be super detailed. And then we're going to start making the lines darker over here. So it's going to go up. And then have a little lump here. And another lump here. See? So it definitely changes the... Let me just add a little line here. You want it to be a lot more lumpy, but at least you have that nice round shape to kind of give you some direction of where you're going to go. Right? So these little lumps here are important just because deers do have like, they're kind of bony. <laughs> they're a little bit bony, especially the baby ones. And then we're going to place one eye over here. Again, doesn't have to be super big. You can even have the eyes closed if you like. Um, that's an option as well. And we're gonna have another eye here. And yeah, we'll just leave the eyes kind of dark. Like we can just color them black because we're gonna use some highlights to kind of make them a little bit lighter. Now, uh, for painting, we are going to be using watercolors, but you're welcome to use like a white acrylic for like the smaller little details like in the eyes. I always recommend we recommend you have that. But if you don't, that's okay. You can definitely still use watercolors. Then we're going to do a little bit of like a shape here on top of the eyes. And the nose is supposed to be tucked in kind of into the grass, but you can definitely have it come out a little bit more. I think that's what I'm doing. And the nose is going to be right over here. It should take up a lot. It's like a little square almost. Something like that. Should be okay. I actually think the eyes should be a little bit lower. So I'm just gonna lower them a little bit more. Maybe right about here. The lower the eyes are, probably the better. You just wanna leave enough space for everything else. Okay, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to color them black for now. Now the nose does have a little of a little uh, shape here that goes up, kind of like a little flame. Just like that. You don't have to make too many details, though. We can do that when we paint, okay? I'm just going to bring it up so you guys can see it a little bit better. It starts to look a little bit like that. Okay. So the nose is nice and dark, which it should be nice and dark so that way you know that what you're gonna be coloring black. But the little area right here, like this little area right here on the nose is also going to be nice and dark. Okay. 
and there's a beautiful little deer. You don't have to do much for the t um, the details. However, they do have a little pattern going on, you know, those little white circles. So that's something that you might want to think about where they're going to be. Because what we're going to do, instead of adding white on top of it, we're actually just going to leave those little white circles white from the paper. So you can kind of choose where you want them to be. I'm going to do a couple on the leg here, kind of like spread out. They just look like freckles. So some of them should be small. Some of them should be a little bit bigger. Okay. And there will be some kind of making a line upward. So they're going to be coming out this way. Okay. Maybe there'll be one here and one here. I think maybe one here as well. There's no wrong placement, so don't worry too much. I do think you should do, uh, you guys should try to do this part right here specifically though, because that one will look the most like their pattern, but everything else in terms of their freckles can go a little bit everywhere else. Now his face is, the one that I drew is a little bit, see how I sketched it really dark? That's okay. Um, I definitely recommend not having it as dark as me just because it will be harder to paint it. I have very pigmented colors, watercolors. Um, so I th I'm okay drawing it pretty dark. Just be careful with that, okay? All right, so we have our beautiful little deer. Um, I probably would have drawn him a little bit bigger, you know, considering the size of the paper, but that's okay. I kind of wanted the wreath to be a little bit larger on this painting and I'm also going to be showing you how to do the cursive writing this can also be replaceable like if you want to do a different modern type um, you can definitely do that as well it's kind of a cute little calendar look <laughs> also quick questions anybody seen any baby deers um around. I only get to see, I saw a baby fox, which was really cute, but I really want to see a baby deer because they're so cute. I've never seen them like this, like laying down. I've only seen them like walking around with their moms and stuff like that. But all right, so I'm going to go ahead and keep going. Um, again, your uh, little deer doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to have kind of like that shape you can always adjust it as much as you want as you're painting. So for the wreath, uh, wreath here, or like the branches that are gonna be coming out, you want to kind of create like a rounded circle. But it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Now there could be things that you can use to make that circle, for example, just to show you an example, if you use like a, like a little disc here, this would be a very tight circle, right? So the bigger your circle is, the more, you know, it's going to cover the whole thing. I was gonna use this one, <laughs> but then I realized it was too small. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it and you guys can do that as well. Or you can use a nice big circle that you might have. Um, I'm just trying, cause we're just slightly sketching it anyway. We're not gonna do anything crazy to it. Um, park was it? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that must be so nice to get to see them. <laughs> yeah, I saw them like near, I've seen like a family near um, the Toronto, the University of Toronto. And oh my gosh, they were so beautiful. Um, and they were kind of like around the residential areas, like of the students. So that was really nice to get to see that. <laughs> But it's not, I'm not there all the time, so I never get to see them, but that's really nice too. <laughs> all right, so um, so you know how you kind of curve this a little bit? You kind of want to follow that shape by kind of going with it very lightly. We're going to kind of start rounding our branch. And it can kind of end wherever you want it to end. So let's see. I'm kind of going to curve it this way. And I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more this time. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle or a perfect curve. You just wanna have a nice little curve. 
Okay. Now the other side is going to also continue. So I would recommend doing it like this, where you're continuing from the bottom and you're kind of curving as you go up and you have to choose where you want it to end. So that could end wherever you want. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker so you guys can see. So it should look a little bit like this. Now the reason it's nice to leave an, a lot of space in the bottom is because there is going to be that beautiful grassy watercolor patch going on at the bottom. So there we go. Now we have kind of like a moon situation um, where I left a little bit of space here because inside of here, it's going to be our November writing, all right? So now that we have the shape of the branches, like uh, we're going to be adding all the little details. You don't have to, you only have to have a line because we're going to paint, paint it into a thicker branch. Uh, there's no point of like sketching it out, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, all right. So we're gonna have some mushrooms over here. We're gonna do the mushrooms first and then all the little leaves. The mushrooms can be adaptable as well, so you can change them up a little bit. We're just gonna start with a little one over here. So the little one's going to be coming out here. Doesn't have to be a perfect little mushroom. And then you're just going to do a line and a little cup. I think this one looks a little lonely, so I'm actually gonna do two little ones here just to keep it nice and um, interesting. Okay, I'll show you up here how it looks. They're just two little mushrooms. They're just a little like stem and a little cap. So they're nothing fancy. I think this one, yeah, looks okay. But these ones are going to be the nice and big mushrooms. So let's do the first one that's going to be right here, this one. So this one's going to be coming out like this and then curve in. Yep. And then we're going to kind of have it come out this way. So we're doing kind of like a little stem here. Now the difference with this mushroom is that it has a little bit more of a texture. So we're gonna do a, like a wobbly line going this way. Okay. And then it's gonna close and kind of stay pretty flat. So this one doesn't go too high. It kind of goes nice and flat. I'm just gonna make it darker for you guys to see. Like that. It kind of looks like a little umbrella. Just make sure that the bump here is not, not too big. And what's gonna make it look really cool is we're going to close it from behind here and close this. Okay, so you're leaving this spot open and we're gonna close it. I know this looks a little bit different than this one, but that's because it will make it look better this way. Sometimes you realize little mistakes that you do <laughs> from the original, but then you're gonna do lines inside of the stem that are all going to be connecting kind of like an alien. Okay. Mushrooms are crazy. Like there's some crazy mushrooms. <laughs> so I was trying to, I'm so shaky. I was trying to do like different types of mushrooms um, and it's like endless, but the cute ones really look like, you know, the simple little caps and like stems. I think those are really cute. But in this one, we're gonna do, you know, the traditional like freckle look where we're gonna do some polka dots inside right over here. Just like that. You can do as many as you want. You don't have to do that many, but just like the deer, you wanna keep them different shets, um, sizes. All right, perfect. Now the other mushroom's going to be coming out from the little deer. So you're gonna do the stem, start the stem coming out this way and this way. And it's actually going to be coming out at the top here, but it's going to be much smaller, okay? 
just going to close it. So when you overlap little things like this, um, it helps a lot to keep your composition looking interesting, right? You don't want the mushrooms just to be right beside each other. You want them to kind of blend with each other and all that stuff. So for this one, you're going to do the same thing you did for the first one. We're just going to do a nice little sphere. Um, sorry, uh, ellipse, like a little a, um, a circle, like a flat circle. And then it's going to have a nice little, put it uh, like a little lamp almost, something like that. You can make it a little bit bigger if you like. Um, that's okay. I kind of make adjustments as I go. And even when I'm painting, I'll like make adjustments as well. There we go. And again, the inside would have these lines. This is a big thing for the mushrooms. Something like that. Okay. Now we can do a little one over here. That's going to be closer to the, um, what do you call it? The branch, sorry. There we go. Again, you can add as many as you want. Even if you did the pre-sketch and you wanna add a couple more, go ahead, you can do more for sure. All right, so I think that's good for now. Um, the little branches, you can kind of add some little branches on inside of the the uh, the branch here. But just make sure they're nice and small so they're not too big. And they're kind of going into different directions. Okay, that part is important. Now, in each little branch that you do, you can do a little leaf. Make sure they kind of vary in size though. Okay, so you don't wanna make them too big or too small. You wanna make sure that they're all kind of um, varying in terms of their shape and size. You can do these little um, red circles. Well, I guess you can't see that they're red right now, but. <laughs> so, you can definitely add little flowers or anything that you want to add to it that maybe you you don't see in the, in the original drawing. There would be a little branch here with a leaf. Just as much as you want. Because there will be grass kind of added to it, so it's kind of up to you. Now there should be a little flower here. Oh, that's okay, Ellie. You can always rewind the video if you like. I believe you can rewind it even though it's live. You just can't fast forward it. Um, but yeah, don't worry. Or you could just watch and then this will be a recorded video for sure. And you can give it a try then. Let's see. Okay. So yeah. And then at the very end, I'm going to do a couple of big leaves here. So the leaves kind of have this like point at the end and then they kind of round up a little bit. Okay, there we go, it's beautiful. So I think it looks good enough for this side. I'm not gonna add too much. You can always add more as you're painting as well. But for this side, I'm just going to add the branches as well. So notice that my lines are not perfect. I'm kind of trying to make them nice and uh, wobbly on purpose because I want them to be organic looking. Okay, I think that looks really nice. And then I'm gonna do a big leaf over here. Just try to vary the sizes of your leaves. I think that will make it much nicer. Now there is supposed to be a little flower here or a red flower. So you can go ahead and do that. Oh yeah, absolutely. You can definitely, so if you follow the steps from the beginning, I think he's a really fun little guy to draw. You know, you can add him everywhere in different sceneries. Definitely in a snow scene would be really cute. <laughs> so it's actually quite simple to draw him. 
um, in terms of stuff. So there's also a little outline provided if if you you know want to just outline um, or transfer the little guy, the little deer as well. That's also really helpful. But he's quite fun to draw. Not super difficult, I find, um, just because you do start with like simple shapes and then um, you kind of um, change the shape as you go. Okay, perfect. So make sure that you're able to see the line. So even though we're not going over it too much, make sure you see the branch. So the line here, because we will go over that. Now the writing, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna write it really quickly uh, with pencil because I, that's what I did in the first time. I wrote it with pencil and then you go over it with whatever colors you like. So this one is a maroon color that I use for the writing. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, do the same thing. Maybe I'll change it up this time and use green. But for the writing, um, you could definitely use a little ruler to kind of do two lines. One for the red for the main November and then a little one for the 2023. So it just depends where you want to put it, but you should have it here. I sometimes like to freehand it and just go for it. I'm gonna do that this time again. <laughs> but feel free to uh, use a ruler for the position of the writing. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. So the November, I'm just gonna start with. A little loop here like this like that so it's like a little hoop and then it's gonna go down now this is the modern type that I chose you can definitely change it up though um, and then what I did is I actually darkened this area right here so I'm just gonna darken this with my pencil There's so many pretty handwriting fonts that you can choose from. So feel free to kind of play around with that. Then we're gonna add the O here. So I just add an O and then a V. So it kind of loops around like this. And it kind of darkens like that. Now then, that's the thing about writing with handwriting though. You have to kind of go fast. <laughs> Otherwise the loops don't look good. There we go. But again, you can make, you can change the font to whatever font you want. Or you don't have to even have font at all. If you don't want to have any font, don't worry. So notice how I'm just darkening some areas of the font. Again, I'll go over it after. November. So it looks okay to me. Maybe it's not super straight, but I'm okay with it. Uh, and then the little line goes here. I do recommend sketching it first because you don't want to mess it up when you're painting it. So once you have a nice sketch of it, you're able to kind of decide where you want to go put it. Now the year is going to be right up here. 20, 23. There we go. I'm not the best with the numbers, but that's okay. It doesn't look too bad. 2023. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Yes, it's I've had a lot of fun with this one as, for a piece. Um for a composition, it was really fun to make. I made a smaller version and now this is my bigger version that I'm probably going to frame and put somewhere in my house because it makes me happy because <laughs> it has everything that you could think fall wise. It would be a really nice scene as a Christmas one as well. So something to keep in mind if you ever wanna do it again, like try this out again and just do like winter a winter scene. So instead of mushrooms, you can do gifts or uh, little pine trees or something like that. All right, so I'm just going to quickly talk about the colors that I'm going to be using. I will swatch them really quickly for you guys, just so you can get an idea of what colors might look good with this one. Again, you can kind of uh, play around with different colors. I'm going to be using a little spray bottle, so make sure you 
you know, if you spray your watercolors, it will make it nice and activated. Um, and kind of let those rest for a little bit. And yeah, feel free to use whatever brushes you want. Uh, it just does have the numbers in the description, but I'm gonna be using like a two, a little black brush here, and as well as a little bit smaller one. I forgot the number. I think this was a zero. So you don't really need a big brush for this one. You can, but I'd recommend, because there's a lot of little details going on, I recommend staying with these type of brushes, like a smaller sizes. And you can use a little paper towel for the, uh, you know, changing of color. Uh, where did I put my little color? Doo -doo. Um, sorry, guys, one second. I'm just gonna get my little cup of water. Oh, I think I should end up using this one. All right. So, I'll show you the colors we will use. Let me just put this one. So for the baby deer, you want to use any brown that you have probably will be okay, but a nice um, um no, not really. There's like what do you mean type? So do you mean like sizes or do you mean just like like brand? <laughs> Because if you're asking for the brand, I use, I actually don't know the brand because I bought these um, and it, they were like, well, I think I have the wrap here. But let me know what you mean by that. I just get like basic brushes, but they're in a different language. So I'm not sure. <laughs> these ones I just got from a like a nice little store, but it wasn't a craft store. And these ones I'll get from Michael's or... Um, any craft store like um, curries. We have a really good curries around here. Uh, but yeah. So the browns that you might want to have, if you have like an orangey brown, use that. I'm going to show you the two different ones that I'm going to have here. If you don't have an orangey brown, you can use um, some brown and some orange. Not a lot of it, just a little bit. Um, to kind of play around with that color. They have a beautiful coat. Okay. I'm trying to soft bristles. Oh, okay, yeah. So they're definitely soft bristles. So they're not um, they're not hard. Like they have to be soft for in order for it to work um, with watercolors properly. Because the harder ones will just you know, the water will just like, it will work very nicely. <laughs> so definitely use soft bristle if you can. But if you're using acrylics, um, that might be, you might want to use like tougher ones, like more um, harder base ones. Let me see. So all I have is soft bristle ones for some reason, because I don't really use acrylic too much. Um, but these are the colors that I have so far for the little deer. So something like this, anything similar you guys might have, I recommend using it for the little deer. Any of them work really well. I'm gonna be using the middle one though, okay? So that way this one will be um, nice and, and kind of orangey. So there was an outline provided for some reason, it didn't save on the PDF that was emailed to you guys. So it was posted on the Facebook event um, and I could resend it here on the group chat if you, in the chat, if you guys need it or require it. Um, but the outline, yeah, so there was an outline, a really basic one. But you can also see how we drew it from scratch if you rewind it a little bit. But yeah, I don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> that little part, the, the, the outline, I mean. So it had to be sent out through the, um, the Facebook group. All right, so I'm gonna start with the painting of our little deer. You guys can also start. Um, I'm gonna be using a nice little soft brush to kind of paint a little nice coat on the body, okay? It doesn't have to be um, perfectly colored. Just make sure you're coloring around the white circles, okay?
I didn't put water on the paper first because I want to have a lot of control over it. Um, you definitely can if you want to, because they might we might add a little bit of water at the end at the bottom here. I just don't recommend using putting water on first for this one specifically, just because you want to have a lot of control of how much you put, how much pigment you're putting. So a light, we're going to start very light and then we're going to darken it up a bit. Yes, you can use um, watercolors, like any watercolors is fine. Um, you know, I find most of the time kids' watercolors can be okay. Like they're not, they're not actually too bad. <laughs> so um, definitely use that if you like. But watered down acrylics is totally okay as well. And with if you water down the acrylic, you might not have any um, trouble with the bristles of the brush. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, but I say give it a try with the watercolor, the watercolors that you have. And if you find that you're not liking the way that they're kind of, there's not a lot of blending here. We're just placing pigment quite a bit. So you don't um, need like super high end watercolors for this one. Okay. So definitely uh, water down your colors. You want to have a nice little washed here on the little palette. You don't want to go straight with pigment. You kind of want to have a nice little coat. And the reason I'm using this nice pointy brush is because it, it allows me to go around the circles. So you want to leave the circles nice and white. However, our goal is to not see the pencil, right? So darkening those areas, I recommend doing that. Even if you get a little bit of the white circle, it's okay. And then I'm gonna darken this little area right here. So yeah, it's always good to start with a light coat and then kind of go back in and darken it a little bit. Because you can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. <laughs> I mean, technically you can, but then you, you don't want your paper to kind of suffer. And then in terms of paper, you can use any paper you like. Uh, obviously, you know, it's better if you use watercolor paper and thicker paper. Um, I'm using, I'm actually using hot press paper instead of cold press. Um, but that's just my per personal preference on the texture. It, and it'll make it look a little bit smoother. That's the only difference I find. So you want to leave these little kind of areas here white, the little areas on top of the eyebrows. Oh, sorry, on top of the eyes. You don't want to color those just yet. And you want to leave this little circle here white as well. There we go. He's so cute. <laughs> Beautiful. And then don't forget the little tail. So now we have a nice little first layer of color on our baby deer. And then we can kind of start thinking about the placement. So you'll notice that the, the, the original, for example, has a lot of dark areas here. That's kind of what you want to go for. Okay. So you want to wet your brush, but you don't want it to be like soaking. You just want to kind of tap it a little bit. And then you want to take that nice little orangey um, brown. And you can actually mix it with a darker brown. So I'll show you what that might look like in the hair paper here. So I mix that orangey brown with a darker brown. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So it'll look like this. It's kind of like a dark chocolate brown with a little bit of orange undertone. Okay. So it doesn't have to be perfectly that color, but just something close to it. Because what you want to do now, you want to start placing very lightly some dark uh, tones on top here. Still avoiding the white circles. You don't want to color those. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of giving it a little bit of texture here. Right? You can always blend it out a little bit by adding a little bit of water to your brush and kind of 
letting that spread a little bit more. Right over here. But doing this little like dabbing motion, like kind of like dragging it out inward, will give it nice and like a nice little fur texture. Okay. And this part right here in between the face and the thigh, you want to darken that quite a bit. I'm just going to go in with straight pigment and like a dark brown and just darken here in between. There you go. Just so that it's like you can see that there's like a little bit of a shadow going on. And feel free to do little, little areas that have a lot of pigment with the dark brown. So maybe a little bit here. Just to give him some, some texture. All right. Not too much. You don't have to do too much to it. Now over here on the face, you can take some of that brown again, this one, the little orange one, and kind of wash it down a bit again here. And you can start doing little hairs going upward on the face. Okay. So he has a little bit of texture going on in his face. Not too much, just a little bit. Now choose a nice brown for the nose area. Um, that brown that you were using is okay, like a darker brown is okay. Just make sure it's washed down a little bit so that it doesn't overtake the whole thing. So, Because if you make it too dark, it's going to be too much. So I'm just going to make this nice and brown. You can go over the nose as long as you can still see the nose. Because the nose is going to be black. Yes, this will have a replay, so don't worry. Like you'll stay as um, you'll you'll be able to watch it after after this. You can even watch, like rewind it now if you like to kind of see what how it was made. Let's see how it looks like. The he has a little chocolate nose. <laughs> that part doesn't have to be added, by the way, because they all look a little bit different. But you want to add a little bit of black. Just be careful. And make sure the nose, this area is not wet, like too wet. And we can just go over the nose here. We're going to add a little highlight afterwards. Okay, so it's going to be nice and dark here. Let me know if you guys are having any trouble, like, seeing. I know it's a little far. I can always fix that. Let me just paint that because I thought it would zoom in a little bit more, but I think I can bring it in a little bit more. Oops, sorry. There we go, perfect. It's a little bit closer. Okay, you should be able to see it just fine from here. So the nose is nice and black, and then you can actually color the eyes also black with this little brush. Again, be careful. You just want to show, we don't have to do any details right now on the eyes. We're just going to do them nice and dark. I will show you. So what I do every time I use watercolors, um, especially because I do, you know, if you do pets or any animal for that matter, I color the whole eye black and then I go over it after. So you can kind of see on the original here how his eyes I have a little bit of brown. It's a little hard to see, but yeah, it's hard to see. But don't worry, it will show. I will show how to do that on the on this one. Okay, now the top part of on top of the eyebrows, you can use a little bit of a brown with some yellow, like a lighter brown, basically, over here. Just so there's a little bit of a change of color here. It doesn't have to be significant. It just has to be kind of there. There we go. You can leave this part white and just darken some areas here. Okay. 
and his little ear. And there we go. Pretty much all you have to do for the deer so far right now. You know, just keep adding little textures as much as you want to add to it to make him look nice and realistic. It's not hyper realistic, but it can, you know, you can make it as hyper realistic as you like. Now with that dark brown, it's good to go over certain areas, maybe around the face here. You don't want to go with black. You want to do it with like a, a little bit of a darker brown. That's it. I'm just going to do the ears over here and just kind of make this a little bit darker to give it a little bit more of a shadow. Cute. All right. You can always take some of that dark brown and kind of do some freckles on the face, like some that are darker than others. They do have that, which is really cute. <laughs> there we go. He looks cute. All right, so we'll leave the little deer like this for now, and then we'll just move on to uh, a couple other parts now. So the mushrooms, um, we'll do the mushrooms and then the, t the branches. The mushrooms are really fun to paint. Um, again, you can kind of choose like a color palette that you like. I'm gonna be using actually this or like yellowish color for some of the mushrooms. And I'm gonna use um, a little bit of a brighter color this time. Maybe darken it a little bit. I'm gonna be using like a reddish pink, but I don't really love that actually. So I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. It's gonna look like this. Like if so, if you have a red, add a little bit of orange to it, just a little bit, just to kind of give it a little bit of a warmer tone. So I'm actually going to start with that red, any red you have that you wanna use for your mushroom, this one right here. And you can kind of, um, you're gonna be coloring around it. So again, the same thing as the baby deer, you wanna go around the circles. So just be careful. Try to use a really fine brush for this one so that you can kind of go around it. There we go. So the more pigment, the better. But um, again, you can start light and darken it up after. I just find it's a good idea to go in with the right color that you're looking for for this one because you have to paint around the circles and um, that could be a little tedious to have to go over it. So this one's a one, one time shot. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you can definitely fix it. There we go. Now, instead of, you know, doing the inside red, you're just gonna go over those pencil lines with the red. This would be a really good one. You definitely can use this acrylics for this one now that I think about it. Um, it just has a lot less control, like, um, you know, because with, with acrylic, you have to be a little bit more careful, but that's okay. Now for the stem, you can use a dark brown um, with a little bit of, maybe even like a little bit of gray. So if you have like a dark brown and then maybe mix a little bit of, um, let's see, I'll show you what color comes out with this one. I use like some dark brown and a little bit of red actually. Any color to kind of give it like a, a mushroom look, like a mushroom tone. Try to think about that when you're mixing up your colors. Have fun with it. Just think about what colors will look, you know, mushroomy. <laughs> and you can always apply one layer at a time. So you can do one layer first and then see how if you like that. And if you like it, you can just go over it. If you don't like it, no harm done. You can just go over it with a darker color. Beautiful, I like that color a lot. But once you have your dark, your color, you want to create a darker tone of that to give a shadow. So let's see. Do a shadow right here. 
And I didn't do this as much with my original one, but I really like the shadow part. I think it'll look, it'll make it look a little bit nicer. Now the back stem, you want to make sure that it is nice and dark. So you can actually add a little bit of black to your brown so that it's a little bit darker than what you have so far. Okay. Because it is in the back and you don't want it to fade. It's really dark. That's okay. There we go. So I'm just going over this a little bit. And it's okay if you make a mistake, you can always go over it with the watercolors, but this is why it's good to start light and go darker. Okay. So if you start dark from the beginning, it's harder to get it to work. All right, I think it looks okay. I think the stem is a little bit small here, so it's gonna make it a little bit darker. Perfect. So I like that step. It's a little bit darker. That's okay. I'm okay with that. You could always add a little bit of white to it, um, you know, to give it more of a grayish tone. I think I might do that actually. Okay. Now the top of the head, you want to make sure that it's, um, this one I'm going to do like a yellowish color like almost like mustardy, so I'll show you. Looks like that. You can use a regular yellow though, just make sure it's not too bright because it should still go with the composition in terms of colors. I'm just starting out a nice little shade. I'm gonna darken it up quite a bit more. And then on the other side, well, you want to choose which side is going to have the shadow. So I'm going to use a darker shade of this and give it a nice little. You also don't want the shapes to be perfect. You kind of want to wobble them up a little bit because if they look too perfect, then it won't look like a mushroom, right? You want it to look a little bit distorted. Also, if there's any gouache users, this is a great one for gouache as well, if you want to try that out. Because there's a lot of, like, there's not too much blending on this one. There's a lot of, like, just pigment placement, right? Okay. Now, the other one, uh, while we have this color already, I'm just going to go ahead and color the this part right here. While I have the yellow. Perfect. And then the stem again would be a little bit of a darker color. Actually, no, this one could be kind of the same color as the first one. And don't worry about the bottom part because we're going to add some grass. So it's okay if it's a little messy right here. It doesn't have to be perfect. And this part is going to have a nice little shadow. So far, so good. I think they look really cute. I think I'm missing, oh no, sorry, I forgot about this little mushroom. So these little mushrooms, again, can be any color you like. I'm just gonna keep it nice and cohesive and I'm just gonna make them yellow, like that mustard color. But you can change it up a little bit. You could also do a couple more red ones as well. Um, and then the stems, 
where these ones actually can be a little bit lighter because they're little. <laughs> He's cute. Perfect. All right. So we have our mushrooms going on. They look nice and um, beautiful. I do, you want to let it dry a little bit, and then you can go back and add a little bit more of a shadow. I don't recommend using straight black for these parts. I recommend doing like a light, br uh, a dark brown. But it, it's up to you if you want to use black. Just be careful with it. This one looks like a lamp. <laughs> Just not ideal, but that's okay. I still like how it looks. It just turned out a little bit more lampy. I think it still looks pretty cute. I mean, the deer is really the superstar here. The mushrooms are kind of just addition to the beautiful scenery or the little cute little scene. All right, so I think we're good for now. Uh, in terms of the mushrooms, I'll just keep adding. So the thing about watercolor is like when it dries, it dries lighter. So you can always kind of go back and forth and look at your little deer and just decide, um, you know, is it where I want it to be? Like in terms of color, is it, does it have enough texture? I think it looks pretty good so far. So what I want to do is the eyes actually. Um, actually, no, we'll do the eyes last. So for the branches this part is a little more nerve-wracking because you are going to be going with the paint and kind of outlining the branch so i suggest doing it light first and then dark you can always just go um straight for it and go dark you can use any brown you have i recommend using the dark brown that we use for the shadows here i think that's a nice brown or you can even do a combination of the brown that we use for the fawn um, and then a darker brown. So something like this and this one. It's up to you. It really is not a big deal what color you use. And then you just want to go for it and just kind of go and create the little branch. Go slowly, you know, kind of have nice control over your hand. And you're just going to go over. It's okay if it wobbles a little bit. You actually want it to be not perfect. You know what I mean? Like you don't want it to be a perfect line. <laughs> I was trying to move my hand a little bit, but it wasn't working. So you can definitely move it all around a little bit. Okay, so don't worry if it's not perfect. You actually want it to not be perfect. And then the little branch here. So this is a really good brush to use for this. It's nice and pointy. You want to utilize the pointiness of your brush to give it that nice branch look. Does anybody struggle with their with like doing straight lines? Because I do. So this is a really good um, stress-free situation because you don't have to worry about it being perfect. And I really try to utilize the brush to my advantage. So like the bristles of the brush, you know, make your life easier. You don't have to try to start from here, like from the, 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 the beginning, and then you go out like that. Oh, that's a big branch. Oops. <coughs> that's okay, though. So notice how I'm using the, the bristles of my brush to kind of give that nice little branch look. Perfect. Not too bad, I think I'm happy with that. Now I'm gonna do the other side. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna get some water. So the other side, the same thing, you wanna kind of slowly build it up. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. You know, when the air starts to come be turned on like the heat <clears throat> I got very allergic to it <coughs> like dry air <laughs> okay so it's a little bit too light for me so I'm gonna darken it a little bit 
And notice how I try to like do it one consecutive line. as many as you want. It doesn't have to be this many. I sometimes go crazy. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So once the branches are added, you're, you know, it's like stress-free <laughs> or a little bit, little bit less stressful because you have them nice and drawn in. Again, you can start light and then go back over it or you can just go for it and just, you know, do one swing for it. I think I'm happy with them. You could, I could make them darker, but I think I like the, the look of it so far. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So I'm just giving everybody a couple minutes to kind of do the branches as well as possible. Again, take your time with it. Because now the easy part is just to do the flowers and the leaves. So the leaves, um, sorry, the flowers is this one. I did one flower here and one little flower here. Nothing crazy, but I'm going to be using a red, that red orange color that I have. You can use a deep red if you have it. I just don't have a deep red. So that's why I end up using this one. But if you have a deep red, use it because it's, I forgot the name of the flower. You know the Christmas flowers? I don't remember the name. Um, yeah, those are the ones that I'm painting right now. So you want to make them nice and red. Thank you so much. Yes. I knew somebody was going to say it. Poinsettias. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the one I have here. Um, maybe it doesn't, it was supposed to just be a red one, but then I was like, I guess poinsettias are like the most Christmas thing I could think of. So I think it looks pretty cute. Poinsettia. So my quick fun fact, my first language is not English, but sometimes I forget the words of some things. So I appreciate it when you guys tell me the names. <laughs> there we go. And then the red here would be here. You can have more uh, of like flowers if you like. I only have two, but you can have more than that. I also I forgot to add the little red like cherries kind of. So I'm adding two here. And I'm going to add two here. That's a good one. There. Definitely add more if you like, though. Oh, my first language is Spanish. So I speak Spanish. But when I came here, I didn't know any Sp any English. <laughs> so I had to learn just from listening. We did learn in, like, where I'm from. So I'm from Guatemala. And we learned how to speak English there too, but I didn't like it very much. <laughs> you know, so when you're forced to learn, then you're good at it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate it. Well, it's been a couple of years now. So I think the younger you come to, you know, you move somewhere, like the easier it is for your accent to kind of fade out, but mine still comes out once in a while. <laughs> All right, so I'm thinking the mushrooms, this one's right here are a little bit too close to the branches in terms of color. So I'm gonna change them up a little bit. You don't have to if you feel like they're okay, but I'm just gonna make them a little bit more gray because I'm thinking they're looking um, a little bit, I'm gonna make them a little bit green actually. Yeah, like a greenish gray. This is just me personally, you don't have to do this. Um, I just wanted to change the color, there we go. Okay, because I don't like how when things kind of blend together too much, and then you can't see what's what. You wanna make sure that every element on your little 
um, around the branches kind of comes, uh, pops out a little bit, right? All right. I'm hoping everybody's doing okay. I hope I wasn't going too fast. Um, like I said, it is a good one to look back into um, and kind of try it a couple times. You can change things about this one a lot um, in terms of the seasons. <laughs> you can change it up. So the leaves are mostly green, but they are some of them are actually yellow. So there will be using, I will be using some like golden colors for the leaves. For the most part, most of them are green though. Now I'll show you the green that I have. You can change it up and make a different green work for you. I have this beautiful like greeny, um, like forest green. I think it's gorgeous. So this is the one I'm gonna be using. It looks like that. It's like very deep. It almost looks blue a little bit. So if it's too green for you, you can always blend, uh, mix it up and do a more grass green. I'll show you. This one's kind of nice too. Whatever green works for you. I recommend using more than one green. Play around with the colors that you have. And then you wanna have a nice little pigment on your brush. And you're gonna do the same thing you did for the branches. So my recommendation is starting from the top and just bringing your brush down. Utilize the, the, the shape of your brush for those nice little points. All right, so we're gonna go here and here. Just like that. All right. So it says sometimes that there's like ads that some viewers might be watching. So I'm gonna go a little slower just to make sure. <laughs> Um, cause I don't know who it shows it to, but you just slowly go through the leaves here and you can add more and more as you go. Um, if you don't feel like you added enough, see how I'm changing greens though. This one's a little bit deeper. I definitely recommend that. Gonna go in with a little bit more of a yellow. You don't want the green to be too yellowish though, because if you change your color, try to use that golden yellow, a golden yellow, like a more orangey yellow. So it looks more fall. So I'll show you what that means. This, this one is okay. It looks pretty good. So changing it up will be good for you to let me just make this a little bit brighter. Changing up the colors will be good because it will make it more interesting to look at. The more greens you have in there. Okay. I think that looks pretty cute. There's quite a, a bit going on. You don't want to overdo it in terms of like busyness, but you can, you can add more and stuff. I'm going to add a nice little green leaf here. And then maybe one here. Just like that. Because they're supposed to be kind of like representing like the leaves still falling, right? You want them to be nice and you don't want to do too many because then it won't look like the whole leaf falling type of thing. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm just adding a little bit of green here. So what I'm doing is I'm going back and forth, right? I'm going back and forth from my colors, from green to a little bit yellow to some <clears throat> different tones and all that stuff. There we go, looks pretty nice. And then my top ones here are going to be. So I really like do, starting from the tip here and going inside. 
because it's super hard to do it the other way. And you could just fill it in there. You because it doesn't allow me to use the, um, the tip properly if I go the other way. So I like to use it this way. Yeah. Perfect. Love that. Okay. Super happy with those ones. I'm just thinking what else I can add. But I think I'm okay with that. Again, you can add more if you like. You can even add more details to the leaves as well. <coughs> I'm keeping them nice and simple for this one. You can even add a little red um, cherry here on top here. Whatever you think might look, make it look a little more interesting. All right, so now I do want to show you how to do the eyes, really. Um, they're very simple, but you do want to use the smallest brush you can have. <laughs> I'm going to use my zero, zero ones, like these old zeros, I think. <coughs> Double zeros. It's like a really tiny one. This one's nice and tiny. One second, I'm just going to get the brush. All right, so for the eyes, you just wanna choose whatever brown color you wanna use for the eyes. A light brown, I recommend using a light brown. I'm gonna make a mixture of this brown and I'll show you. <coughs> so sorry guys, I keep coughing. It's the air. <laughs> It gives me like a little bit of an allergy. So this golden brown I'm going to use for the eyes with a little bit of this one. So it looks a little bit like, just so you have a light brown. It doesn't have to be specific. Now I might have to lift this up because it doesn't let me show you really high up. But basically, you have your eyes all black, right? So what you want to do is you want to go and create a little hoop. inside of the eye, it's really hard to see. So maybe, let me make it really light and really, really light. The lighter your brown is, the better, honestly, because it will make it nice and clear to see. You can kind of see it a little bit. Let's see. So you're gonna do a little hoop like that, and a little hoop right here. Okay, it looks a little scary right now because we haven't added the highlight. This is what it looks like. Can you guys see that? So it has a little, so be, the eyes were all black. Now they have a little brown hoop inside. Okay. It's a little hard to see, but it should be okay. Now what's going to give it that nice, cute look <laughs> is going to be the highlight. So the highlight, you just want to wash your brush and add, you can use, if you have a white acrylic pen, that would be awesome. I don't have one, unfortunately, so I'm going to use like my white uh, acrylic. It's not the greatest, but it does the job. I'm just trying to find a better, oh, there we go. <laughs> like it gets enough of white that I can, I'm okay with it. But basically, you want to choose a little section to put your white highlight. I'm going to put it right here. And then this one on this side right here. Okay, can you guys see it a little bit? It's a little hard to see the white highlight because it's not like super white. But if you have a much better white one, feel free to use it, okay? But this is what's going to give it that cute little look. Baby deer. And what I do sometimes, I'll let it dry and then go over it again. Specifically the highlight. You can kind of see it though, it's really cute. Now with the white acrylic, sorry, with the white that you have, you can even use a white acrylic, oops. Um, with that white, you're going to use it to do some hairs inside the ear. Like that. So it's going to be kind of coming out. You can do a little bit of white here as well. Again, it's not super bright. 
is just kind of faded a little bit, but it does the job. So kind of add it here. Just a little bit of white hairs. They have a little cute little white hairs going on right here. Just make sure it's a nice small brush. We can even add a little bit of white here. A couple of whites in here. <laughs> and baby deers have um, eyebrow, um, no, what do you call them? Eyelashes. It's really cute. Well, deers in general, I think, have eyelashes. Okay, I think that looks pretty cute. So I'll show you from up close here. See, so my white is very like grayish looking, not the greatest, but it works for the little eyes. And then another part you wanna do a highlight is right here on the nose. See, very subtle, but very like necessary almost. Oops, so let me make the eye too light. Okay, that looks really cute. So the little nose will make it nice and give it a nice little highlight that you want. Oops, that's brown. Okay. And then the hairs, they're a little bit hard to see. So Again, your white might be much better than mine. I actually do have another white somewhere, but I've been meaning to get like a white acrylic pen <laughs> exactly for this reason so that I can use it for the highlights and stuff like that. But like I said, I always layer it as much as possible. So there we go, there's more white here. See if you build it up a little bit, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, perfect. All right, so we're almost there. What you wanna do now for the bottom part. So I saw someone mention something about like, oh, like we're not gonna spray it with water first. You didn't wanna do that for everything because you wanted a lot of control. There's not a lot of like um, kind of washes, but the bottom will have that wash. So if you can control it, you know, in terms of spraying it, you can use um, a little bottle and just kind of spray some water at the bottom here. Just be careful because you don't want to hit your little deer too much. You don't have to do too much. You can even still use your brush and have a lot of water in your brush. So you can have a big brush for this one and choose any greens that you want to use. And you want to have a lot of pigment in it so that you can add a lot of pigment at the top here. And you're kind of adding it like this. Kind of like going up a little bit. Just like that. And you'll see how it starts to kind of do its thing going downward. You can kind of help it and just drag it out a little bit. So yeah, there we go. All right. And I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow for this as well. And just kind of spread it out as much as I can. I don't love the way it looks at first and then it starts to kind of look better once it dries. I'm also using a different type of paper for this one. So just keep that in mind. In um, top press paper, it will look a little bit less like this. It will look a little bit more um, together, I guess you could say. But then you can go with your smaller brush and just with a lot of pigment, with a lot of dark green, and you can start flicking it upward. Because you want to do these little grass patch, almost. Kind of give it the illusion that it's like grass, right? And it's up to you how dark you want it to be. 
So if it's really watery, you can go back in with more green, whatever you want to do to make it look more interesting. Sometimes I'll put a lot of pigment dead and then I'll go back with my spray bottle because now you can see the color, right? So now that you have your color down, you can put more water. I'm just kind of let it do its thing. You can kind of move it around a little bit up to where you want it to be. There we go. <laughs> and I'm okay with it going in here. I'm just going to clean it up. I want it to be nice and green. There we go. I love that. I think it looks really nice. You can also add a little bit of salt, you know. That's also a nice little, and then once it dries, you take it off. But then you don't really need to. I love texture for the grass part. It's just kind of optional for you. Make sure you do some grass, some of them a little bit longer than others. You can have it as high as you want. But, you know, just make sure you have it nice and flicked. Beautiful. Okay, now another thing that you I did add to this one. I do have a little bit of pencil going on, but I'll erase it after. So another thing you want to do as an option is flicking the paint on top of it. So um, those ones I did use red for that, but I might do green this time. I'm not sure. Or maybe both. So I'm gonna do a little bit of both, I think. And basically, you just want to wet your brush. You don't want it to be soaking, but you want it to be nice and wet with a little bit of pigment, right? And then we're just going to go ahead and kind of flick it. Again, you don't have to do this. This is kind of completely optional. I just like the way it looks, but, you know, it's not for everybody, that's for sure. And then I'm going to go back in with some red. I like to test it out sometimes because sometimes it doesn't look the way I want it to look. So you can test it out in a different paper and see if you like it. There we go. That's nice. And like I said, it always dries a little bit different. Like it dries different than it does. There we go. You know, the other instructor, um, Christine, she does beautiful work with like splashes. I don't tend to do it too much, but sometimes it's really fun and it's really awesome to do it. So she's inspired me. <laughs> and then you can dab it a little bit if you want the spots to kind of right away not be super intense and just more. Just, you know, just a little pop of color. It doesn't have to be crazy. Now the writing, I actually use like a maroon color for it, but you can definitely use black, like a black fine liner if you like. Or you can use um, literally any color you you're, you want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the writing, I use actually a brush to outline it, which can be a little tricky. Again, if you you know you feel like your hand shakes a little bit from it. You know, I, I had a lot. I used to just want to do marker. So if you have a nice eyeliner marker, you go ahead and do that. I'm going to be using a red color for this one. I'm going to make like a maroon color. So I'm just going to do this. Yeah. So the trick for this one is having a really good consistency of color and, and pigment. Sorry, pigment and water. So you can test it out over here, for example. I like to test out my brush. And I'm like, okay, love that. I think it's a good amount. So I'm going to go ahead and start. It's not coming out as straight as I wanted to, but that's okay. Sometimes you just kind of have to go with it. Not too bad. Once it dries, I do like to go over it and erase the pencil lines. So don't stress out too much about that. Yeah, like I'm not going 100% right over the pencil. 
because I don't want to stress about it and I can always erase it after, okay? So you guys can keep that in mind as well. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so you just want to let it dry. And then for this one, same thing. You just kind of want to go over. My hand is extra shaky today. I don't know why. There. Not perfect, but that's okay. Just went a little bit thicker here. Beautiful. Okay, I'm happy with that. Again, I'm <laughs> such a perfectionist. Actually, I'm not really, but with when it comes to the this part, like the smaller things, I do get really caught up in it. But I think it looks okay. There. Not too bad. And then now the numbers, which is also very tough. It's like you feel like you can't breathe when you're doing this part, but have fun with it. Like, don't stress out too much. Again, use a marker if you have one. I think it's much easier that way. That's not, that's not okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. The only thing I would like to change would be the eyes in terms of, like, being able to see the highlight a little bit better. So I'm just going to try to go over it again with white and see if that helps a little bit more. So I keep having to go over it. Oh my god. Not too bad. Perfect. So I do wish I had more yellow to add here, but other than that, I think it looks pretty cute. Now, if you did put a border in it, um, you know, the thing is nice and less stressful because you can kind of go crazy with the splashing and all that stuff. So, you know, I really enjoy adding a border, but it's definitely not necessary. So I'm just going to take it off while you guys kind of finish up. We're going to finish up here. So the, I do have another event um, on this, this Friday. We're going to be painting a little baby owl. <laughs> Can you tell I was obsessed with baby animals this month? They're just so cute. But yeah, it's going to be a little baby owl. Uh, lots of fun painting him. It's a little bit more... Um, less precise so it's it doesn't come with an outline because you really don't need it for that one you'll see because it's super simple to get done and then after that i do have another one called the winter horse so i'm going to be painting a beautiful horse um not a full one just the little the the, the head of him uh, but i'm excited for that one too if you that one's a paid event so, you know, if you enjoy my events, you know, whether it's live or paid, I welcome you guys to come. I love seeing everybody's beautiful, like, artwork when you share it to the Facebook group. There we go. So I think this one turned out really nice. Uh, and, yeah, like I said, so don't stress about if you feel like it was a little too, um, you know, it's hard to keep up with a live painting, but I'm sure you guys did awesome. But this one will be able you'll be able to watch it afterwards as well. All right, so this tape is not being my friend. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it off. But yeah, make sure you post it, especially if you have like a different you chose different colors than me. I would love to see that. I love when people do their own tape to it. And there we go. So I kind of got it in his head a little bit. So that's the only thing about the splashing part of it. Um, it's kind of difficult to avoid uh, getting it on, you know, your little care, your little animals and stuff like that. But either way, it kind of works well. I'm just going to share the little event really quickly for the, um, what do you call it, for the next one. Uh -uh. All right. So... Yeah, feel free to post it somewhere um, in the group if you finished it um, and if you're trying it out today. We're going to be ending the live in just a second. I'm just going to send over a quick little link for you guys. Um, there we go. 
So the next event I have, like I said, it's a little owl and it's going to be this Friday. Um, and, you know, I love doing these free events. I think it's super awesome and fun. Um, I do have other paid events that are coming up this month, I believe. I have two more. We're going to be doing a cardinal in a snow globe. So feel free to check those out. Um, you know, I'm um, the instructor is me, Anna. <laughs> I, really, I don't think I even said who I was, but it should say in the title either way. But, you know, any tips are super appreciated. Um, that way I'm able to do more of these free events. I think it's uh, really fun to do. I'm just trying to share the the little bird event that we have going on, but I can't seem to find it. Okay. Well, yeah, you can see, check it out on the group. Um, and I'll be posting on the events, like any information. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you guys had lots of fun with this one. Like I said, take your time with it. You're able to rewatch it anytime you want. And I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your week. Um, stay strong. <laughs> it's just Monday, but it's okay. We'll make it through. All right, everybody, have a wonderful night. Bye.